Hi there. Yeah, you just caught me doing a little bit of stone clearing there. This is one of the uh, more minor cairns that I've created. Don't worry, you're not watching the stone clearing podcast. That will never be on video. It must remain a secret. This is just a tiny little corner of the field I'm clearing. clearing. I can't tell you how much bigger than this it is. If you like uh, stone clearing or interested in taking it up, then um, why not check out Richard Herring, uh, Stone Clearing with Richard Herring, uh, which is a new podcast available on iTunes uh, and also uh, British Comedy Guide. But this is Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre podcast, and um, this week's guests are the Fingers on the Buzzer podcast. It's a podcast clash, and it's a very good one. Um, after last week's introduction, you know, it's difficult for me to... Uh, top that isn't it which celebrity guests will i have waiting for me in this field in hertfordshire well i think you're all going to be very excited wolfie wolfie come here wolfie look it's wolfie from the stone clear richard herring podcast what a celebrity that's better than dave gorman and his gorgeous wife isn't it miles better anyway uh if you enjoy these podcasts you have a chance to come and see them live we're back at the leicester square theater from the 4th of february every monday till the 1st of april that 1st of april will be the first post-Brexit podcast, of course, uh, if London is still standing at that stage. Uh, I'm also around the country. I'm in Wolverhampton, Bilston, on the 1st of February. Uh, Bath, I think, is the 15th of February. There's a few others that have sold out. I think there may be an additional gig in Brighton that hasn't been added uh, as I speak, but hopefully will be soon at 6 o'clock-ish at the Old Town Market, oh, I'm out of breath from all this walking. Oh no, there's another dog walker coming, I'll have to be quick. Uh, go to richardherring.com slash gigs to get all the info on that. Uh, and can I see the dog walker coming in the distance? I don't know if you can. Certainly not if you're listening to this on audio. Anyway, I'll, I'll have to pretend I'm not so clear because someone's coming. Wolfie, come here, darling. Watch it, hope you enjoy the show. Bye. I'm looking in the wrong place there. How's that? I can't check both at the same time. Bye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Please welcome a man who is still drunk on last week's one beer. It's Richard Herring. <laughs> Thank you very much. Welcome to another episode of Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre podcast. I was talking to Eddie the Eagle Edwards uh, the other day. <laughs> we went skiing together and um, he calls it Rehalist of Persona. Remember old Eddie the Eagle? David, remember him? Do you see the film, Eddie the Eagle, starring the bloke from Kingsman? No. Anyone see that film? No. Yeah. Well, who, who, the people, the three people who saw it, was it any good? Yeah, it was good, yeah. Why, why did only three people see it? Uh, d- directed by Dexter Fletcher, who used to be in Press Gang, and Julius Waller. So it's... Uh, it's <laughs> so... We have something in common, and... Uh, <laughs> I'm drunk enough to say that one time when I was having sex with Julius Waller, she called me Dexter. So it's, uh, there we go, so. (laughs) And I still carried on going out with it because I'm an idiot. Uh, So, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, And I'd like to say hello to, uh, we've got some uh, guests in tonight who've come from Refuge, which is a fantastic charity. Are you here? There's loads of them. Hello, how are you doing? Who, uh who are a fantastic charity we raise money for on uh, International Women's Day, if I don't know if you remember that. I'm sure that will be happening again. We're recording very close to International Men's Day, so uh, let's see how much we make for a man's charity during that nothing. Uh, Let's see, next year, there's big plans for next year. Don't worry, so thank you for coming along and thanks for all your fantastic work for that amazing charity. Uh, And uh, we're going to crack straight on. We've got... um, uh, This is a subject I'm going to be very interested in. This is basically what... I want to make this podcast. Uh, we've got guests from another podcast who've just taken out all the emergency questions and the faff that isn't about quizzes, uh, which is the rubbish bit, and just made it about quizzes. Uh, one of them is probably best known as the woman who bought the fridge in Being Sold, and the other <laughs> is best known for being the, doing question verification on one episode of It's Not What You Know, it's Lucy Porter and Jenny Ryan, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully. They're there, they're here. 
Come and sit down anywhere you like. Welcome. There's water. It's very nice. I always like a little kiss at the beginning of everything. <laughs> Why not? Uh, you help yourself to a beer. Oh, my goodness, that was close. So to close. Very close to losing a gin and tonic there, but it's still there. And that is the main thing. We can get you more <gasps> if you need it. So um, we've been out with Esme all afternoon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's still going even from last week. <laughs> that woman's a machine. She was surprisingly sober backstage, wasn't she? It yeah. was like it sort of it, it had, she'd worked out of her system, <laughs> and then she was like, "Oh, that was good. I've spent that now. That's good. I'm going to be a delightful old sewing judge." Yeah, I think Joe Lysett will be getting her drunk again as we speak. He probably at this exact moment. Um, <laughs> so, woman who bought the fridge in being sold—that's you. Is it? Well, according to IMDb, it is. I've got no idea what that is. It, I don't know what that is. Okay. I've never heard of it. I don't know what it is. Um, it may have been a terrible... There was one short film I did where I had to do a sex scene with Shed from M People. Okay. Um, and that was awful. Okay. Um, he was nice. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that was... I've never done a sex scene before or since. Uh, and it was... Well, I, you got sold a fridge in this... I mean, I don't, it, that makes it sound really porny, doesn't it? That he's, <laughs> <laughs> I bought a fridge and then the next thing I knew... I think it might be that. There's probably okay. some... I've done a few... I used to think I could act. Yeah. And then I did some acting and it was terrible. And I did. a friend of mine was making a short film and asked me to be in it. And I did it and it was so... Like, if you've ever done any acting, then if you are aware that you are acting, you're probably not doing it very well. And I was doing this short film and I just, I was like, oh God, this is really terrible. And the more I thought this is terrible, the worse it went. And it was just, oh God, I still feel really Dude. awful. Acting's all about confidence. Yeah. It really is. And I, you know, and I, I lost my confidence with acting a lot of times. Mm. And then it's, whore, it's the worst thing. With stand-up, it's easy though. Yeah. With stand-up, it is just entirely confidence. Yeah. And you go, well, that's rubbish, but people seem to like it. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, when you, oh, yeah, yeah, when you're doing something that you can't do. But luckily I've married an actor now. Yes. So that's all, that's all the acting happens in that area <laughs> he of the house. The He's in everything, your husband. He, well, he was in Endeavour the other day. Wow. And uh, he was, a, well, he looked like he was going to be a murderer. Yeah. Except, and all my relatives were texting me going, oh my God, he's the murderer, isn't he? And I'm like, no, because he looks like he's the murderer. And the whole point is the person who looks like the murderer is not the murderer. And yeah. I, Too early, isn't it? It was so too like early. Yeah. He was to nine. Yeah. It's not the murderer. No, he was murderous at about half eight. I mean, it was ridiculous. <laughs> so yeah. Far too early. So, and all my family are thick, it turns out. Oh. <laughs> 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 or just Justin looks like he's a murderer. It could be that. So it's, <laughs> and uh, it's not what you know. Yes. What, what question did you verify on that show? Do you remember? I've, I've verified all the questions it for an entire one series. It says question verification on one episode. I need IMDb. To get, I need to get in touch with IMDb because that's false. There, there was a whole series of that that okay. nobody watched because it went out on challenge. I did it? What yes. was the What was the twist on? Uh, it's not what you know. It's not what you know. Was um, the questions had already been asked to a panel of celebrities who were experts in different topics. Okay. And you could choose to um, take the answer. Or if, if it was a physics question, say, you know, you had Professor Brian Cox there. Did, or you you could, have, did you have Professor Brian Cox? I think it was pre-Cox. Pre oh, really? okay. It was pre-Cox. Okay. Um, but Price. you, you <laughs> could do that or for even more money, you could take the answer of uh, Shed from... Um, people, yes. He knows. He was his, on for for his fridge knowledge. He knows his way around a fridge. That man, I tell you. <laughs> what does Lucy Porter's bum look like? That's yeah. so that he could answer that one. Yeah, can Lucy Porter act? No, <laughs> it turns out no, she can't. Uh, so all the, all the questions were very well verified. verified. But was that a Bradley Walsh? It. Was that a Bradley Walsh vehicle? It was not. It was Chris Tarrant. Ah. Oh. It was Tarrant post millionaire. Yeah. Post millionaire. Yes. So he went, left millionaire. Thought I'll go to challenge and do an, another quiz show. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't. That, that, it, it was not the roaring success. And uh, but it's, I mean, it's, who wants to be a millionaire is quite a. It's quite it was always going to be a hard to, act to follow. I would have so. just said, I'm not going to do any more quiz shows if I was Chris Tarrant. Yeah. I'm going to go and fun. do Railways and the Holocaust, is what I just saw him do the other day. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he did. That's why I'd gone straight into that. Well, that's, he had to. He had to leap to it. So he couldn't just leap straight <laughs> to Holocaust. <laughs> he had to go. Terrible quiz show. Yeah. Holocaust. Na Nazis. How yeah. they got people around. <laughs> 
it's a good uh, opening gambit on the show. So uh, you two are working together on a podcast called Fingers on Buzzers. Correct. Yes. Which is uh, my main interest. This is a great podcast. You're looking into the world of quizzing and TV quizzes and talking to ex-contestants on quiz yeah. shows. Well, we found each other on The Chase because okay. I was on doing We the, on The Chase. Ah. I don't like to mention it, but we did win the most amount of money that's ever been won. Wow. I uh, know. I didn't... I, I wouldn't have brought it up, Richard, but you do... And were uh, you The Chaser on that episode? Because that is... No, no, no. I was sitting backstage Phew. thinking... I would have beaten them if it was me in the chair, but, you know. I know, but she was, was very good, and the governess, she was very good. Yes. But um, it was because, so, Jay Rayner and Krishnan Guru Murthy are massive dick swingers, right? And so, <laughs> <laughs> they, they were on, uh, so I think it was Jay Rayner first, and he took the high offer, right? Like, whoa, I'm going to take the high offer with my massive penis, here it is. Um, and then... Krishna Guru Murthy went next and he went, well, my penis is as big as yours. And Are you able to use your penis to actually push the thing back up? <laughs> 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 rang, dang, diddly, diddly, <laughs> dang, dang. Um, and uh, so there was a lot of money on the, yeah. uh, on the board and then I had a terrible, um, you know, cash builder. But I thought I cannot be outdicked by these two. So yeah. I took the high offer as well. Wow. And lucked it out and, and got back. And then lovely Steve Davis, who is the nicest man in the world, kind of went, Oh well, I won't I won't take the high offer and uh, <laughs> just went for the you know the normal one, the middle one. Yeah. And we were all like, ah wanker. Um <laughs> <laughs> My penis is bigger than your snooker cue. And uh, uh, anyway, but and then it was so there was a fin- I mean, it was a lot of money, and yeah. you do kind of go, bloody hell, this is kind of quite serious. But we just got, I'll be honest with you, and I don't want to, um, you know, expose any secrets, but it is a bit easier when you're a celeb mm. that you sort of you realize that they have done what you've done and they've read your IMDb page. <laughs> and they so they say, Who was in uh, the selling a fridge, whatever thing it was? <laughs> and you go, Oh, that was me. It was and, me. <laughs> yeah. So it is slightly, I mean, those ones I think are slightly weighted against right. the chaser. Is that, is that fair? You're not allowed to divulge that kind um, of secret. I, I I can't comment on the official position yeah. because nobody tells me because we're not allowed to communicate with the question team and all that sort of, of stuff about that sort of thing. But I, as a casual viewer, you do you you might notice that there but are some you... questions about things that the celebrity contestants should know. Okay. So it's even more funny when they don't get it right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've seen a lot of celebrities. So I think the thing with the chase, it's such a difficult quiz to win on. So more, more often than not, people don't win on it, which is quite... I mean, that's quite bold. I suppose Eggheads is like that as well. I don't like Eggheads. I know you worked on Eggheads a little bit, didn't you? I, I was a contestant on uh, a, a show where they were looking for a new Egghead. Right. I'm glad you didn't get it. I'm glad you're not an Egghead, because <laughs> Eggheads is rubbish. <laughs> I really hate yeah. Eggheads. I think it, it, there shouldn't be a multiple-choice element on uh, Eggheads. I think it works on ch- The Chase, because the questions are hard enough... <laughs> Uh, that it's difficult, but like with the with the with the eggheads, they can make an educated guess down to at least two, but probably one. Yeah, but I mean, you know cer- certainly Kevin and Pat from the eggheads, they don't need a multiple choice for any of the questions ever. Yeah. She, they 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 know some ridiculous level of deep knowledge about any topic you care to give them you know furniture designers from the 1970s they'll, they'll be yeah. able to name the top five from austria which is think? weird isn't it do you yeah. know why it is? i saw i saw kevin from eggheads in pizza express in winchester once <laughs> yeah uh, and i was eating on my own so i'm not judging that but he was eating on his own <laughs> and uh, he had a big book of facts that he was looking through as he ate his yeah. pizza. Pizza Express might not pizza. Hut, that's TV money for you. Yeah, making, making that some is, nice, isn't it? That's sweet, isn't nice it? He's having a Venetiana. Do you um, sit in Pizza Express on your own learning facts? Occasionally. Yeah. Yeah. You got it, right? You got it. If you're going to be a top level, because you're a quizzer as well as on TV, you sort of yeah. you do all the competitions like yeah. Paul, who we've had on Paul Cinder. Yeah, it is. The it is how I got into it is because it is it's it's kind of an all-consuming hobby because yes. it does become that way. If you if you want to compete, like the end of this week I'm off to Venice to compete in the European Quizzing Championships if it's not Ooh. underwater 
<laughs> oh, oh, I'm paying for myself. I don't have a sponsorship. <laughs> we haven't been buying a, enough for uh, Nexianas in Pizza Express. That's what <laughs> it is. We haven't saved Venice from the water. No, it's because I, 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 I say it's compulsory, so I say I won't pay it. That's why. It's my, my yes. fault. Um, it's not compulsory. Um, how do you, is it, as an individual, you go on the, in those tournaments? Yeah. And what's, yeah. The, what's the highest achievement accolade of your quizzing career? Um, I, I did win a gold medal in the team competition at the Quiz Olympiad. Wow. Mm, yes. Right? It's not that exciting. I didn't. <laughs> I, I, I was the highest scoring person from England in the TV category. And so because England swept the board in every other category. Is it now. like going for gold where you've got an unfair advantage because it's all in English? <laughs> <laughs> I th there has to be an inherent unfairness, although a lot of the other European competitors do speak much better English yeah, than, no, the, that's than true. the English. Well, like on going for gold. I mean, going for gold. Yeah. We've been trying so hard on our podcast because we get on people who've been on like various quiz shows and we are trying so hard to get somebody who was on going for gold, but it's like they were all shot after <laughs> competing because <laughs> you can't find any of them. And there's like loads of like, you know, plucky little Belgians that were like, oh, it'd be lovely to see them again. But yeah. we, we need to, we, it's Eric from Norway we want to find. Yeah. If anyone and for can... a man we want John from the Netherlands. Yes. From, I think it's from Series Two. The two finalists from Series Two. Okay. It was, it was hard classic? fought. It was it was a classic final. Yeah. You need to watch the YouTube clip just for Eric's reaction when he wins. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It is thing. just beautiful. He's that that man. No wonder he retired from quiz because he, he couldn't top that. That's it. Well, you can't, once you've done Going for Gold, that's just nothing else. Also, the entire theme song, the Hans Zimmer Going for yeah. Gold theme song, the entire thing is available on YouTube the and extended. I recommend it. Of course it is. It's yeah. The heat is on. The time is right. It's time, time for, for you, you, for for you, you to, to find your, your game. game. People, People are coming. Everyone's trying. Trying, trying to be the best that they can when they're going, going for going for gold. gold. He writes but, movie sc scores, doesn't he, Hans Zimmer, as well? Gladiator. Yeah. yeah, it's Oscar winner. But did you know? Do you know the second verse? It's got several verses um, as the theme tune. The heat's still going on. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite as exciting now. We're still Dutch and <laughs> Belgian. Go on, what's the second verse? I don't know. Uh. <laughs> no. It's out there. It's, it, uh, is out there. It's, it is available. Yeah. If you just play it on a loop, you can you can put it on. Uh, it was a great, it was a great show. Going for gold. It's my happy place, actually, is just watching. Because what we do is when we have someone on, then you say, oh, I'll go. So we have, like, someone who was on Blockbusters. But then you go to YouTube, and then you end up spending five hours of your life watching old Blockbusters <laughs> and just thinking how amazing Bob Holness was. And it, it, that just is the happiest time of my life, was that sort of being young and watching quizzing and thinking... But it also it seems like yesterday. The one, that I, the one that seems like yesterday to me is quite an obscure one, which is Master Team that Angela Rippon used to yes. be the host of. And my mum... You know, I was about 18, and my mum would make... I just remember eating soup while my mum had made while watching Master Team. Oh. And it feels like that was yesterday. How can that be 33 Look years at you ago? Now. Look at me. Look at you now. And I had soup today as well. My wife made it for me. Cauliflower but where soup. was where was Angela Rippon? Nowhere. You had cauliflower soup last week as well, didn't you? I did. <laughs> I love it. I'm mad on it. I love it. Can't get enough of that best. cauliflower soup. It's fantastic. Um, do you know Ben Moore? Did uh, Ben Moore? Do you know Ben Moore? The lovely I do, Ben Moore. Yes, yes, yes. He uh, did five gold runs on Blockbusters. He, wow. he went. He got to go to LA. He met Mr. T. <laughs> yeah, that was that was his prize. Seems like a natural Blockbusters prize. <laughs> it isn't does. That? I think the, I think the Mr. T was just incidental. I don't that was part of the prize. I think it was at Universal Studios. And, well, because um, Kitson did Blockbusters, yeah. that's on YouTube. Steve Merchant, that's on YouTube. You can watch all of it. We haven't managed to get either of them for the book. They'll come them. down. They'll come down to talk about Probably that. Probably will. Probably. Um, do you think it was unfair there was two against one on Blockbusters? Did the one never do very well enough? It, was, it wasn't en enough of an advantage on the board, I think. No, because you were one extra. It was four you? versus five, wasn't yeah. it? Two versus one. Um, yeah, but then the beauty of it being sort of sixth form is, is nobody cared, did they? <laughs> but you were like, apathy, oh. yeah, the apathy of the whole thing. Yeah, because yeah. you didn't like the... I mean, even though I was sort of of an age, I loved the show, but there were a lot of them who were, like, you know, they were the kids at school who had... You know, I would have loved to have done it, but wouldn't have had the confidence at the time. But now I've become one of those dickheads who would have done it. You know, I mean, yeah. I, that's what I've learned in life, is that it is all about confidence and... And quizzing, like acting and comedy, is a lot about the, uh, you know... You've got to be confident enough to be that be. solo contestant up against a duo. Yeah. And don't care. 
And the advantage is, I suppose, you know what you know and you don't not wait for the other one to buzz in. I suppose that's a slight advantage. We did have a brilliant uh, bloke on who'd been on with his mate. Who was, yeah. yeah, and was his great. mate was an idiot. And <laughs> he was just looking at... You know, we had someone on from Bullseye as well, and it is lovely when there's two people and one of them's an idiot <laughs> and the other one just can't disguise their contempt. <laughs> it's the pointless clip. Oh, God, The clip yes. from Pointless. There's a beautiful... There's two oh. girls on Pointless and you see a friendship dissolve in front of your eyes. Because <laughs> what's the question? It's, it's name, name a country which... Ending in ND. Ending in ND. Yeah, that's the one. And the answer... And, that, and the, the, uh, the girl just... She spaces out, you can see. Just, just she's, she's looking into the heart of darkness all of a sudden and goes, I don't know... Paris? It's amazing. It's, the, it's, it's the pure fury on the friend's face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fury, disappointment, disgust, <laughs> embarrassment. You just see everything crystallised. Yeah. You think, that's not going to be a fun train journey home, is no. it? No. And I get that, because it is like she slept with her boyfriend or something, but it's worse. It's worse. <laughs> than that. Because it was on TV. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Paris doesn't end in ND and it's, <laughs> and it's not a country. But apart from that, it was a good, it was a good crack. Better than to pow, isn't it? So uh, it's... <laughs> not that I'm holding I grudges. It's so good. I never tire of your bitterness <laughs> and competitiveness. I love it. I really, really... I just, look, I just always... It. I'm a loser. Just, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a try-hard loser. Yeah. But it's, that's what I want to win. It makes it so, it, you know, if I tried to manufacture it to become someone who'd get on quiz shows a lot on TV and get paid <laughs> for doing that, someone who really wants to win is obviously good enough to win and better than everyone else, but who doesn't win. <laughs> that's what I would, that's the character I would create to coin in those pointless millions. <laughs> <laughs> I bet the fourth time you go on Pointless, it's going to be brilliant. I can't wait. Well, we're saying backstage, you and I should go on. You've been on twice and not one. Thanks to Ed Byrne and Rob Deering. Yeah. And Bloody you have been betrayed by who? Other comedians. Rona Cameron, uh, Robert Webb, cunt. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Useless cunt. And um, <laughs> after I got a Pointless answer and everything. Yeah. Uh, and uh, my wife... Katie Wilkins let me down very badly. Yeah. Very badly. It's nice Actually, that you're still married, actually. That well, is good. I mean, the fractures are there now. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do that look that the girl gave to I the did. woman who said Paris? I think, it? like, you can see... What's quite nice about the... Like, twi I've been on Pointless three times and I've cried twice on Pointless. <laughs> and not... And right at the beginning, like, when they're interviewing you, because they interview you and, you know, you, you're think, But they, you've, they've asked the question and they're interviewing you. And so you're thinking, fuck, I've got to think of an answer. You go, yeah. I'm on tour. I'm doing this. <laughs> and the second time, they were kind enough to cut my crying out. Because <laughs> literally, I'm definitely going... The, second, the, third, the third time I was on, I thought, oh, I'm going out in the first round again. Yeah. And he went, what are you doing? I'm doing a show called The Best. <laughs> <laughs> it means so much to me. So I actually... Um, <laughs> I actually, Katie was so nice to come on that show with me that yes. I, I didn't mind that she was. At least she didn't get anything wrong, you know. That's the the, the others got the questions. Well, not wrong, but you know, fuck them. Well, Justin, I'm over it. I'm over it. Justin refused to uh, do one with me. Did he? Yeah. yeah. You and me together, and then we'll win, and then then it'll be us, you and me. We can ditch the others, yeah. ditch our families and our pair yeah. partners. To be honest, because, like, you know, what they're putting into the gene pool is not up <laughs> no. to scratch, is it? So <laughs> we'll, we'll leave the substandard partners and children and we yeah. shall create our own master... I mean, it's time's running out for me, certainly, <laughs> but just... we could, uh, you know, if we, if we act quickly. I'll store some up. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, reckon I reckon there's a couple of swimmers in there still, so... Um... <laughs> Uh, well, let's uh, let's uh, let's let, I'll, I'll actually I'll ask you some questions that are questions that come out. I'm going to ask you some both quiz questions because I ask uh, on this podcast one of my emergency questions is finding out where you're from and asking you what is the tallest building. Uh, and you're from Bolton, yeah, Jenny. What is the ta tallest building in Bolton? Um, St Peter's Church. Well, you know, I think I'll give it to you. Parish it's, Church. St. Yeah. Peter's Church. Yeah. How, how high would you say that was? It's pretty tall. Yeah. 
<laughs> but it's not that tall because we, we're not we're not we're not Manhattan. Well, let's say. I, I'm going to give it to you. The tallest building structure in uh, in Port Bolton is the Winter Hill TV Mast facility. But I don't think that's yeah, that's a not a building. building. And the second is the sorry the Bolton Thermal Recovery Facility. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a chimney that one though. Yeah, sounds sounds like it's so a I'm fancy give it to name you. for it. What's yeah. the tallest building in uh, Croydon? The tallest building in Croydon is the, uh, it was called the 20p uh, piece building. It was derelict for many years um, yeah. and it is now open again. Okay. I don't know. I didn't look it up, so you might be right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've got, I've got some questions about Bolton for you. I'm going to right. see how we go. Oh, how many cotton mills were there in Bolton in 1929? <laughs> um, 34. No, 216. Way Good off. Good Lord. Well. It was, that was just before it started to... There are basically none by the 1980s. Uh, what does Bolton mean? The word Bolton, what does it mean? There, there are many... Uh, is that, there is are that, many theories on this. Is there? Yes. Yeah. What does Wikipedia um, say? It's, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's something to do with a town in a valley, basically. Yeah, settlement with a dwelling. I'll give it to you. It's more or less the same. Who owned Bolton in 1067? Who owned Bolton? Who owned Bolton in t- um, 1067, 900 years before my birth? Uh, Lord Stanley. It was Roger de Potoy. Born in Bolton <laughs> in 1961, I played roles in Holby City and East is East. Yeah. What A am I? Um, Ian Aspinall. Yeah, correct. Well done. <laughs> uh, he's also in Time Gentlemen, Please. In Time Gentlemen, Please, we, um, we booked Ian Aspinall and Ian Aspital to play two characters. <laughs> each other and there were tiny little parts and I think we mixed them up and Ian Aspinall is quite a big was quite a big deal uh, it's a little joke for us Ian Aspinall, Ian Aspinall. Uh, what Bolton Crescent features in Jeremy Brett Sherlock Holmes the man's crescent of course yeah, only one. One. we've only got one crescent we're not posh enough for anything born in Bolton in 1753 I invented the spinning I can't read my own writing mule, mule yeah. Samuel Crompton yeah cool. <laughs> Lucy Porter in questions about Croydon, Croydon mm. for you. True or false? Croydon True. is shit. <laughs> That's... It is false, huh? Richard. Born in Croydon in 1973, I am best known for playing the woman who bought a fridge <laughs> in being sold. Who am I? There's some dispute about whether you're in that, though. <sighs> there is. Out of all the celebs born in Croydon, excluding present company... Who would Rich Tang most like to fuck? That's a really, really good question. Thank you. Um, I think... Is it, well, born in... Because I was going to say Terry and June. <laughs> OK. But they merely resided okay. in Croydon. And same with Ronnie Corbett. Rich, just, he only lived there. Um, I... Do you know, I now can't think of anyone except Noel, Noel Fielding or Sue Perkins. Kate Moss. So, I, oh, Kate Moss. I think Noel Fielding. <laughs> pretty close mm. David McCormant oh, oh good, good choice, choice. Yeah, good choice. Katie Mellow as a backup <laughs> <laughs> Which that build- would be so melodious and oh. lovely wouldn't it that would <laughs> be was- such a lovely thing David McCormant yeah. and Katie Mellow are serenading you yeah. as you hump them oh. <laughs> I think the closest thing to crazy she'd ever seen. So, uh, which uh, <laughs> which building in Croydon appears in the film The Dark Knight Rises as Gotham General Hospital? Ooh. That's a good question, isn't it? God, I don't know. Is it Mayday General Hospital? Uh, no, it's Delta Point. Oh, that might be the one with the. That might be the one the I was talking one. about. Let's yeah. say it was. Okay. Gets fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> Let's say that was. Uh, do you I want think... to do a quiz about us? Yeah, I do. Yeah, let's do okay. Um, right. Okay. So it's uh, facts about us, and it's either Jenny, Lucy, both, or neither. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> had photos of her foot published in a medical journal? I have a feeling that is. I've got a f- weird feeling. I know this, and it's you, Lucy. Well, do you know, I am very popular in the foot fetish community. (laughs) 
That is absolutely true. Yeah. Um, I have had pictures of my foot. Uh, I used to perform barefoot because I was very pretentious. Um, and I thought I was like, the comedy is Sandy Shaw. And it was, uh, anyway, I was an idiot. Um, but I used to perform barefoot. And uh, it, this became a thing in the foot fetish community. Oh, um, but their interest in my feet was purely sexual. Yes. Whereas Jenny's feet are more medically interesting. Oh, are they? Okay. Yeah. I had I had a large ganglion on one of my feet. And Did the, you? Uh, when I had it removed, the specialist took photos to show, basically show his mates, wow. but he published them as a, as, a, as a medical marvel. Right, they're allowed to do that, doctors, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just publish that. And, and then they turned up on one of your websites. And exactly now, now the foot fetish community know that. If I know okay. anything about the foot fetish community, they will love that. Um, there'll be a niche. Um, uh, has never heard her mother fart. Um, you must have heard your mother fart, unless, unless you were deaf through your whole childhood. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say Jenny has never heard her mother fart. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> oh no, yeah. she's from Bolton, what am I thinking? <laughs> um, has never heard her mother not fart. <laughs> Just since you were born. <laughs> um, and let's say neither, is it neither? That would be a great one for neither. No, it's me. Okay. That one's me. Your mum's um, never farted. She well, never. She well, she's dead now, so she can't. But she, um, she. <laughs> well, she might, actually, well, she you probably, still can. She has no she, control over it now. One does, but uh, apparently, but yeah, no, she never. I just don't think she did. Okay. She claimed not to. Okay. Um, had a crush on Jeffrey Holland. From Heidi High. Spike. <laughs> Spike, the first rule of comedy. Spike. Um, oh, that could be either of you. I'm trying to poke a face you. Lucy Porter's looking away. It's Lucy Porter, just Lucy. It's both. Wow. We just bonded on this today. Yeah. We never, really? We never knew, but uh, we both... And, and Amanda, our producer. Yeah. She's, wow, all three yeah. of you. Jeffrey Holland. Yeah, I think... He plays like Stan Laurel in a touring show of uh, Stan Laurel's which life. Which I went then. to see in, in Edinburgh this year. Yeah. So horny. For, for <laughs> <laughs> I'm no band show. from Pleasant Scott. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> not allowed. Do you still like him now, or is it just in character? I, 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 it, I think it was a it was a time and a place, and I think spike. it was the yeah. It was it was, he it was, was so fresh faced and lovely and put upon. And Paul Shane, I I actually hated him. Yeah. Because I thought Ted Bovis was bullying evil. him. Yeah. yeah. yeah um, but yeah, and I really do remember it being a sort of a lovely little sexual feat. You know, just a little that thing where you're first discovering mm -hmm. what makes you tick. And Jeffrey it turns Holland. out it was sort of quite poor comedian. <laughs> <laughs> so I have pursued that ever since. Um, do you want another one? Do you yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, lived in a Perspex box in a shopping centre for a week. Both of you, together. <laughs> <laughs> is that David Blaine? Is he, is, was he one of the answers? Um, it's got to be... I don't know if it was you. It's got to be Jenny. Yes, it was me. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you'd live... Why were you living in a Perspex box? Because um, a radio station challenged me to do it. <laughs> and there was another girl in a box which was kind of partially attached to it. Right. And um, we had to, not, without leaving the box, get food and a bed and clothes and items brought to us. Right. And, um, and then by the end of the week, the, uh, the callers into the radio station had to decide who was going to win... Uh, cash prize. Yeah, and did you win? I didn't win, but the my opponent, uh, she her day job was working in a call centre, so all her colleagues just kept ringing in and voting for her. <laughs> However, I, you know, I, I got a holiday out of it. So did you? I was, okay. I was, I was I'm going to ask about that. the toileting situation. There was a a portaloo, which was it was not perspex. It was it was. Uh, it had a genuine wall and door situation. Wow. That's so it's like a very cheap Big Brother, Bolton-based Big Brother. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was Man it was in the Arndale in Manchester, so it was reet posh, that. Yeah. And I got kept awake by the, uh, you know, the, the cleaning things for cleaning the, the big floors in a shopping yeah. centre the, with the swirly, whirly it's things. Tragic. Yeah, they just went round and round all night and it, I didn't sleep. But oh, I, can't I had a great time. I had a great nice? time. So I don't, you know, that... Even now, I would say that's quite a cruel thing to do to two women. <laughs> and, like, now is cruel, isn't it? Yeah. But when did you do it? What year was it that you did it? Um, oh, good Lord, now you're asking. Uh, about 2003. I'd have thought people were kinder then. No. Sort of pre-Brexit. No. <laughs> no. After Practice. Brexit, that we'll all be like that after Brexit. <laughs> First Brexit. We've all got two, me two metre by two metre cube. <laughs> and that's, that's it. 
you can ask, uh, uh, answer quiz questions, you get a, a biscuit. <laughs> That's what it would be like post Pretty much my life already, so... So let's have a let's have a look at some more quizzes. What is the what's the greatest quiz show that didn't become a massive success? Mm. Oh, I know. Um, it is what was the terrible one that we were talking about? <laughs> we, oh God, hang on, come back to me because my brain's gone. It. What was the one? Can you mime it. Where the audience at home? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's gone. But the um, the one where you won a house. What was that one? That was. Uh, that was short-lived, but quite good. There was one where you won a house. Was that with Bob Monk House? Yes. Yeah. Never took off. Raise the Roof? It wasn't called Raise... That was something else, wasn't it? There was one called Raise the Roof where you won... I mean, in terms of... Because, like, quiz shows generally are quite good. You know, things like um, Touch the Truck... Well, game shows. There are game shows that you think, God, that was amazing that that ever got made. Yeah. But there's not really a quiz show. I'd, uh, well, there, there was a really good one on Challenge Call. It's not what you know, but uh, I remember the uh, second series. The questions killed, were very well verified. Chris <laughs> just <laughs> one question was verified well enough to make it onto IMTV. <laughs> I always liked. Um, what was that one Tim Vine did? Oh, he did a couple, didn't he? Whittle. Whittle, Whittle. Whittle was brilliant. Yeah, yeah I really. Yeah, liked bring that. back Whittle. And he's one of those people you just go. He's such a natural, lovable quiz show man that he should. Uh, he should have something. Yeah. We should write something for him. Let's write him a quiz show. Yeah, I think so. Do you try and come up with what, formats yourself? Have you had any success well, Lucy, with that? Lucy's got one. She's pitching at the moment. She's, but she's, she's just going with the zeitgeist, really. She's, yeah, she's picking things like. that are popular and jamming them together, whether, whether they go together or not. People like cakes. They do. And they like dancing. Yeah. Cakey, cakey, dance off. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I've got. It's pretty um, good. But yeah, I think you you, you were trying to add a quiz element to it with the quiz questions concealed within the cakes, but I'm not so sure. So you sort of smash a cake by dancing on it and then yeah. the quiz questions revealed yeah. and then and then That's Tim good. Vine does something. Yeah. That we'll build is, Tim into it's, it's, it's in there. development. It That's is it. very much in development. No, I'd love to come up with a quiz show format because it is what I love doing most. And I do always do quiz. Like, I, every show I've ever done has always had a quiz inserted into it somehow. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it's just one of those things I'm just a bit too lazy to do. The Weakest Link was created by a comedian, wasn't it? Yes, Cathy Dunning. Cathy Dunning, that's right. So that's... And she suddenly went from being an open spot comedian who was, like, getting the mega bus around like we all were at the time to living in a penthouse flat in Fitzrovia <laughs> wearing a kimono. She suddenly started wearing a kimono because she was rich and that's what yeah. you do. And it was amazing. I mean, good on her, you know, it was bloody amazing. I mean, that's it, isn't it? That's if you can come up with the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, the, the one that goes all around the world... Let's do it. Let's come up with one well, now. We need, to, we need to get your son involved in this because he knows how to write a quiz show. <laughs> First time I met him, he was like, right, we're going to do a quiz show. And there are three rules to writing a quiz. Yep. First one is start the questions easy and make them progressively more difficult. Mm -hmm. Two is each contestant must have their own sound. Yeah, and I can't remember the third one because then he started running round in his pants. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he did a commercial break. <laughs> it was, it was marvellous. He did. It was a compelling. Yeah. I mean, it was more sophisticated than cakey cakey dance. Yeah, it really was. was. Yeah. But yeah, because we do that. Because I, the reason I got into quizzing was because my dad was a mad quizzer, and so at dinner we couldn't have pudding unless we answered questions. Wow. So if you wanted your Arctic roll, you had to know the capital of Peru. And so I have Lima, now... Lima, give it to me. Yeah, <laughs> if only. Um, yeah, so the... I mean, obviously, I, I, I do quite well these days for, uh, <laughs> for puddings. But um, so the kids have all... They've inherited this love of, of quizzing. Your dad liked 15 to 1. I think I remember saying you on one of the podcasts. You yes, said, so he was going to be on it, but he had to have his hip replaced instead. <sighs> I know, and he went to his grave not knowing that one day his daughter would be on 15 to 1. <sighs> It's, you know, I, I, li I would like to think that he, you know, somehow, <laughs> I don't really believe in an afterlife, yeah. but I like to hope that his energy in the universe is proud that I failed to win 15 <laughs> to 1. That's a hard one to win, though. Uh, it was really, especially when you're on with Frank Skinner, who right. is, st I mean, absolutely a bastard. <laughs> absolutely a complete bastard and was playing completely tactically and then Dave Gorman who is just very good at those kind of things. Um, yeah, and it, I mean, the thing is I really like quizzing but I don't, you know, I'm not that good at it and that is what, Jenny's teaching me the way of quiz. Yeah. 
She is my Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> I'm working on the facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> and has anyone on the chase ever killed someone and then not told anyone, then written about it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. I couldn't possibly comment. No. <laughs> if someone on the chase, one of the chasers was secretly, had secretly murdered someone, which one do you think it would be? <laughs> It's hard to tell, isn't it? I mean, fuck it. It's, it's Se- murder on the audience. Well, secretly murdered. It yeah. would definitely be Anne right. because Mark would tell you all about it immediately. Um, Paul would do Paul a one would, man Paul show about it. Our show yeah, about it. Yeah. Yeah. And Sean would would have to defend himself. So he, I don't think he he's not the killing type. No. No. It is. Do you know that thing you were saying about the Daily Express, where because when I did the chase, they did a big story about uh, Bradley Walsh furious with quiz contestant and um, and my aunties in Ireland got really worried right. and called me up and went, oh, what have you done to Bradley? Oh, um, That was not an Irish accent. It was <laughs> the voice it of was, a ghost was on from this somewhere. podcast. That's a, that, that's a good one. <laughs> um, well, go, I was going to talk about that because the Daily Express seem obsessed with it. They're like, if you look up the chase on, like, if you go to the clips, there's loads of weird, like internet channels where it's not even it's voiced by a robot yeah. going and this terrible thing happened in the chase where Bradley was and there's there, these are manufactured stories about how Bradley was there's one that you uh, revealed that the guy who'd won the prize was a quite a well-known quizzer who'd won various quiz things and Bradley Walsh couldn't believe He'd what been happened duped by yeah. this contestant which clearly he hadn't because you yeah. knew from all the way through who he was yeah. anyway so he must have done as well What's, what's going on with the Daily Express trying they, to make stories out of the chase? They are obsessed with the show. I th- they, they must have somebody who is paid to write one article per day about each daytime TV show. Right. And it's purely based on the top three Twitter comments they see. <laughs> Viewers furious about this contestant's answer. There's three people on Twitter who said, oh, that was a stupid answer. And this guy, the, whoever, yeah. this poor, I don't know, some kind of probably some child labor thing going yeah. on where there's this there's the tamarin away at their keyboard trying to come up with any sensational story and you're looking con- at it, you think that that's that was recorded about a year ago and <laughs> i'd forgotten all about what was the what all oh, right yeah i made i made a joke oh my god but there was yeah. controversy over you not being on it for a while and yeah. then people were asking where where the mystery of where yes. you've gone yes I've, I've i've left the show i've been fired apparently yeah, yeah. she'd secretly um, killed a man me. yeah <laughs> and was lying was, low for a while yeah i was on the run in the netherlands <laughs> <laughs> i was going up and down canals punching people <laughs> <laughs> the story about the chase every day though is that people hate the person who's taken the lower offer and i mean that's just it because people just get really furious that somebody is profiting off the uh, labour of others. Right. Which I think is quite healthy. I think it's quite healthy to hate those people and shame the public. <laughs> like Steve Davis, for example. But, yeah. I can see that. Well, like, what gets me about the chase is that people always go, well, I think you could do it. I think you could go for the big money. You they always ask, but why don't you go safe and vote for the middle? That's basically, when they ask the other contestants, that's basically all that gets said. Yeah. Just don't bother asking. It's like Ben Shepard going, where do you think the thing's going to land? I don't know, mate. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know, Ben. It's random. Oh. What was... <laughs> That's the, the point, isn't it? That's the point. What was that brilliant one? I think it was called The Edge. Where yes. Did anyone see that one? Where you ha- It was like crown green bowls, <laughs> oh, but yes. with quizzing. And you had to... So you, there was, you had your bowling ball and you had to throw it to the edge of, like, this thing. And the nearer you got to the edge, the more money you won. But you couldn't go over the edge. You couldn't go over the edge. And the, yeah. uh, the contestant chat on that was like, well, so how are you going to approach the edge? <laughs> and they said, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw the ball quite hard, <laughs> but not too hard. Yeah. And it was every day I was like, oh, I'm loving. Because you could see, obviously, some poor researcher like I used to be had obviously said, why don't you say it like, um, I'm going to put some heft into it, but I'm going to hold back. And then the poor contestant would just panic and forget and go, I'm going to be hefty, <laughs> um, but hold myself. Um, and uh, that didn't see that's one that didn't last yeah. that I really but enjoyed do you like that one I, lo- I do love the thing I love most is the the crap bits of it so yeah. the chat like the contestant chats on Bullseye yeah brilliant absolutely sp- I mean Jim Bowen was a master and was brilliant and he sort of he spun gold out of the really because it was that era like Bullseye in the 80s where like no one had ever met a celebrity or if you have met a celebrity even fleetingly that was the most exciting thing that 
They, there were fewer celebrities, for one thing. They certainly were. And it was all everyone had... I mean, it was everyone had met Gary Wilmot. <laughs> and that was it. It was like, well, I once was in a lift with Gary Wilmot. We didn't speak. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, and I love all of that. In fact, the thing I love about Joe's uh, new show, the, um, the Time It Takes, Joe Lysett, who was on last week, yeah. um, uh, and his friend... Um, <laughs> Uh, the thing I love about that is that they've got an element of that where they do these ridiculous challenges and the contestants have to say which one they're going to pick. And it's so... It's sort of meaningless, but it's brilliant because they kind of go, um, I'm going to pick squeezing bean juice through a pair of tights <laughs> because I think that's going to be quicker than uh, dogs going up a stair lift. And uh, it, just really, it just really works because the banality of it is really good, I yeah. think. There seems because uh, since uh, House of Games and Taskmaster, there seems to be a lot more of these kind of these yeah, yeah, game yeah. shows that are part quiz and part sort of slightly humiliating <laughs> exercise. I think on the I know, and I don't normally like faff. Like that's yeah. why I really I like fifteen to one because it's just questions. Yeah. And it's like, what was the one? The really pure hundred to one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Because it was one. literally just. You didn't get any chat with the contestants and there wasn't even a host in person. There was just a voiceover and he asked 100 questions and yeah. whoever yeah. had 98 out of 100 or rather than 97 was the winner. I they agree. got to I, stay on. I don't like, uh, I don't like the, especially because it makes me cry, but there's the bit where they talk to the contestants on Pointless. I just want to get on with Pointless. <laughs> yeah. We don't need to know anything about these people. <laughs> Let them answer the question. Just yeah. do the question. Give them, put them out of their misery. Stop making them think of the question while they're trying to talk about themselves. Well, when we go on, when we do it, yeah. we will just say at the beginning, I'm sorry, Xander, we do not want to speak to you. <laughs> We're not going to say who. Stare him down. We will not. To, this, everything is riding on this. The future of our marriages. <laughs> don't try and engage us in small talk. This is too important. Just ask me the question. And I think that will endear us to the nation. It will. It will. Let's ask you some properly hard questions from the random emergency questions book. Questions without. I think I got the human centipede. Did I get the human centipede one last time? You might have done, yeah. I think it was. I won't do it again. I can't remember who I picked. Well, Well, it'd be interesting to see if I picked the same people, wouldn't it? It would. Um, (laughs) uh, What is your most mundane encounter with a celebrity? Uh, ah. That's the question above how sensitive your nipples, which I decided not to ask. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to put which one of us has a third nipple. Oh, okay. I mean, gosh, just thinking about it. <laughs> um, I think it's. I think it's Jenny. No, just the two. Yeah, no, it's me. I'm weird in that area. It's got her three feet. nipples. I've got a tiny, tiny third have nipple. You? Just tiny. Can it's you, not, it's nothing a, to write home about. Can I have a look at it later? <laughs> <laughs> Whereabouts is you it? Get, it's on the underboob, so it's not is even it? really rude. Okay. It's just a sort of little... Anyway, fine. Sorry. God. The f- fradure in the audience. There, <laughs> We've gone too far. You we have, have gone, gone too, too far. far. I don't ask questions like that. Um, what is your most mundane encounter with a celebrity? There must You must have loads. Um... Robert, well, uh, Frank Bruno thought I was his taxi driver. <laughs> <laughs> that was a pretty mundane. I mean, it was quite. I was at uh, I was at Champney's Health Resort in oh, Tring. Nice. Yes, I know it. And uh, I was driving at the time a blue Peugeot three hundred six. Yeah. And uh, parked up at the front, and Frank Bruno hopped in the back. <laughs> And said, take me to Luton. And I said, no, Frank, I won't. Uh, and uh, he took it very well. Did he? he didn't punch you. I mean, he's no. really big. And you're, I would love to... That's like a... Could be a sitcom in that. <laughs> From massive Frank Bruno, tiny Lucy Porter in a I was taxi his driver. Mistake, yeah. I think if I was Frank Bruno's driver, that could be quite a good fun... Yeah, that could be a fun yeah. thing. Driving Frank Bruno. It's like driving Miss Daisy. It's, everything's <laughs> flipped around. It's brilliant. Come on. It's, it's the driving Miss Daisy for the 21st century where there is no racism. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had a... You, you must... You've yeah, met a lot I, of celebrities. I, I made Derek Okora a cup of tea. Did you? Yeah. Just randomly? or did no, you, did I was, When I was working on The Weakest Link, um, oh. I had to muck in with the celebrity specials and I made him a cup of tea in a polystyrene cup. Did he, did he know it was coming? <laughs> <laughs> Fraudulent Derek Okora. We can you. say that. What, what happened Probably. to him? What's, what's, where is he? I don't, uh, no, he still tours. Still, still going. Still tours. I think he's one of them. He's passed on. <laughs> it's on the other he's side. Well, but he's still he tours. And he's, he's still just still yeah. What are the yeah. secrets of behind the scenes of The Weakest Link? Was Anne Robinson as mean as she appeared in the scripted bits she did on TV? 
She stayed mean all day, did every she? day. She did not break character. Wow. Yeah. I did um, did the weakest link. You've done and them all. I did, uh, You've done everything. I wish I was you, Lucy. Test the nation. Well, you need to be as desperate as I am. <laughs> you really do. Um, I did test the nation, and it was uh, me and Barbara Dixon were the were the best ones on that. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, and Anne Robinson was nice, and I. I'd met her and I thought she was really horrible because on The Weakest Link she's just really horrible all the time and then on Testination she was a bit less horrible. No. Was she horrible all the time when, when you were backstage at the... I will say and she didn't break character. <laughs> <laughs> I don't she, think, I think she is, an, I think, you know, she was nice on Testination but she's still, she's a firm. Frosty, yeah, yeah. And she's got that persona to maintain but I sort of, I think she's, she's alright. She's allowed to drop it now, though, isn't she? It's, so, it's over now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> She's allowed to go. What's she up to now, Anne Robinson? Does she still do a bit of Watchdog? I see her on Watchdog. I know. The tables have turned, haven't they? You're on TV every day, and where's she? That's where you've got to watch out in show business, Lucy. No, not, not Be nice room. on the way up, because when you're... Be nice to go on the way Quizzing up, Quizzing gingers it? are... Uh, <laughs> there's a limited number that are allowed on TV. <laughs> um, all right, another emergency question. Oh, this is this is actually a fact. This is a, for an interview. This is a fact-based one. I don't know what the answer is. How many tennis balls would fit inside a Boeing seven three seven to the nearest three? Oh, that's you. That's you. It's a maths um, question. I, don't, I understand I you're don't, not necessarily the best at maths. I, I'm the worst at maths in in probably. You don't Europe. have to answer it. It's My kids question. are doing like estimating things at the moment. Are they? Yeah. Do, I sort of go well. There's in a seat on a. How many seats do you reckon there are on a Boeing seven whatever it was? I can't even tell you that, mate. Right? Like quite a lot. A hundred, like you could. Any Boeing seven three seven engineers in the audience? No. Oh, that's unusual. <laughs> seven four seven. What? It depends. It depends. Good, good answer. There there are many you could take all the seats out, and it would fit more tennis balls in. Yeah, that's really true. If it was a military commissioned one, yeah. then they turn all the seats upside down or something, don't they? It's a bad question, but at it's least just, at least one. It's a question for an answer. interview to ask it an interview, just because you can make people squirm with something like that. They think they have to be. These are questions for interviews. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, if I asked you to get a moon rock for me right now, where would you go and how would you get it? People <laughs> have, to, have to do that. God, what like are Spider-Man's main it? strengths? That's a good it's question. Like a lot of sugar right here. Are you okay working alongside robots? Might it lead to any issues for you? What if the robots were armed? What if the robots are <laughs> sex robots? Self-cleaning sex robots. What is the most orangey thing you've ever managed? Oh, I like Good that question. question. Yeah. If you're in hospital, would you prefer to die than be Patch Adams? <laughs> I would. Yeah. Sad now, he's dead, isn't he? Uh, well, there we go. So uh, it's, it's all sad. Um, it's very morbid for a light-hearted wow. chat, this, isn't it? That's what life's all about. That's what quiz shows are all about, life and death. <laughs> yeah. That's what they're all there for. <laughs> um. I think if you could actually do a quiz show... I mean, if, if I had to face a firing squad or something, then I think if there was a quiz involved, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> I, do, I do sort of feel like that's the way I want to go. It's your last request. You, yeah. don't, you won't have a last meal, you'd have a last... I'd have a last you know. quiz, yeah. I wonder if there was a quiz show, like in, maybe like a s mixture of like game show, quiz show, where there was like a thousand people in it, one of you is going to win £10 million pounds, and one of you is going to be killed. Mm -hmm. Whether they get contestants for is that. this post-Brexit we're talking about? Yeah, it probably is post -Brexit. <laughs> But I think people would do it. I think celebrities would do it. If you thought there's a one in a hundred, one in a thousand chance of you being killed, but there's a chance of you being successful, I think people would do it. <laughs> you would do it. You would definitely. I'd do it because I wouldn't come last. I'd come second. You'd do it and volunteer your wife. <laughs> You'd volunteer Katie. You'd be like, come on, love, let's do this one together. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's, I, it's cakey, cakey dance-off could take a twist. Yeah. Where it's cakey, cakey death dance off. Yeah, well, you'd slip over with all the cakes everywhere. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh God, it'd be. Why? We've you've started and finished. You've bookended this evening. Uh, yes. With with morbidity, haven't you? Yeah. Well, no, no. It's, I'm very concerned about. I'm 51 years old. I know. know. You, you youngsters. Oh no! Don't. I'm menopausal. <laughs> I'm I'm morbid and furious at the same time. It's terrible. <laughs> I'm, I'm aware that I'm dying and I'm absolutely angry about it. I really am. But uh, anyway, good. <laughs> <laughs> Bring back Esme. Um, <laughs> Where is she when she needs you? Uh, yeah. But um, yeah, so but the podcast is is, is, it, is going out. How long is it going to go? Are you doing any live ones? Because that's... Yes. That's a... Well, the beauty of it is, of course, what we will do is quizzes. Yes. Um, 
and you know so basically we can just take over any pub quiz really but yeah I mean it's the I think what is lovely about what you are doing here and what you know what is happening now is that it is like uh you know, I thought, oh, will, will podcasting take the place of live comedy or live entertainment or whatever, and people will just sit in and listen to it. But people do want to come out and, you know, and go, God, I, I really like that podcast. What I'd really like is to come out live and just see how much they talk about death. <laughs> that never makes it into the edit. You know, that that's the thing. So what we will do is we will quiz and then we will talk about yeah. death at some point. But... It's like you are aware. <laughs> yeah. Life is... It's all a lot of fun, but uh, guys, we are all going to die. But there was, yeah, there was that time I went to the pub quiz where there was an entire round on genocide. That's marvellous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were you genuinely, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it, was, no it, was gen it was genocide and um, serial killers, and yeah, we we started to really worry about the quiz master that week. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we had a quiz master, so our local uh, pub quiz at the Queen's Head, the guy, it, it had three heart attacks, but he still wouldn't give up the quizzing. And uh, so he came, having been, he said, oh, I've had an angiogram. They say I'm fine for now. <laughs> I've got to go back and uh, see, you know, see what it's about. And we were all like, it, it, yeah, it was really weird, because we were like, God, it is lovely that you've come, but we're all... Because normally we would do quiz, you know, team names that slagged off the quiz master. Yeah. We'd buy, like, you know, Dave's a smelly bastard or whatever. And we, that week it was all very kind. It was all like, come on, Dave. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> we believe in you. <laughs> oh, good. Well, the podcast is very good. You must check it out. Uh, Acast, is it? Yep. Yeah. Acast. Yeah. Uh, that's what all the kids are doing these days, Acast. Turns out, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Is, is it James Acaster? It could be, yeah. Some sort of They've got to get him on, haven't they? I mean, they've got to get him advertising it at least. But uh, there we go. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, you're doing stand up uh, still, Lucy. You're, you're touring. You've got a tour show. I'm not all about the quizzing. Um, yeah, I, in fact, I've got a really morbid stand-up show. Have you? Yeah, which is called uh, Pass It On, and it's That's all right. about death. Um, and what you inherit from your parents and what you pass on to right. your kids and stuff. But that's on tour in yes. the uh, new year. And so we will probably be doing some sort of quizzing while while I'm out on the road. Yes. We'll combine that. And are you getting better at quizzing as a result of hanging around with the Vixen? Yeah, the, the, the Bolton Brainiac? All of those things. It's good. Do you know, and it is a... I wish I'd had... I wish I had a look or a name or, a, you know, a thing. Because it is really good. It, we like, should get your name. Yeah. I mean, you're little. There must be a pocket rocket something somewhere in there. That's what you just need a little. I know, but that doesn't come over on telly, does it? You mm. need like a hair thing, or you a... do need hair. I don't know. Anyway, just stand next to Frank Bruno. <laughs> all the time. The chauffeur, <laughs> the puppet. <laughs> Why don't you get Frank Bruno to put you inside like a baby carrier on his chest, <laughs> <laughs> and you could be the baby. You could be Frank Bruno's baby. Bruno's baby. <laughs> That's a gimmick. I think that's, that's it. I think that would work. That's a gimmick. Uh, but... Well, it's, thank you so much for coming in and good luck with the podcast. Do listen to it and go and see these guys if they do live ones and do and see Lucy's show. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Fingers on Buzzers <laughs> team. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Thanks thank you. Coming. Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs>is another halastapa in the old internet toilet i hope you enjoyed it uh, the figures on buzzers ladies they were fantastic remember you can get your free beers at beer52.com slash i didn't nearly forget uh, you can get my emergency questions book from all good bookshops and gofasterstripe.com where you can also buy ofrig on 50 my fantastic dvd if there are any left there's Rip four discs, oh fucking 40, oh friggin' 50, loads of extras, snooker, interviews, behind the scenes, me going around Shepherd's Bush with Chris Evans, not that one. It's the most amazing thing you'll ever watch in your life. Also available on download. See you next time on Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre Podcast. Run. How do you like them Sky Potatoes? <laughs>